Our voices. Our stories. Our community. As an able-bodied person, I had a much greater belief in my inabilities than in my abilities. And it's, it's a little ironic, but it's also very delicious because it means that life doesn't stop being something new just because my abilities have changed. After suffering several strokes that resulted in vision loss, Mary became involved with Kelowna's Community Recreational Initiative Society, known as CRIS. The organization's goal is to take ordinary people with abnormal circumstances and put them in extraordinary situations and experiences to be able to go to places that uh, everybody else dreams of um, and can find the resources and the means to do it. Well, we're doing that now for these people as well. Founded by Troy Becker in 2002, Chris is a unique nonprofit and charitable organization that uses adaptive equipment to enable people of all abilities to interact with the great outdoors. We have uh, adaptive adventures and we have another area called adaptive travel. Adaptive adventures is all our day programs and our local community programs. So that's run through up and down the Okanagan Valley. Then on adaptive travel perspective, that's basically everything outside of here and it involves more elaborate trips, those once in a lifetime opportunities, I mean, we do these trips probably three, four, five times a year, and we do different locations all the time. Uh, it's really up to the individual what they want to do and where they want to go, what they want to experience. What really limits our ability to do something is uh, people's imagination. That's what really determines where we'll go and to what extent we can do something. Mary, along with two others, have been selected to join Chris on a traverse across a glacier. I love to do things I've never done before. That is what's wonderful about it to me, that I can possibly go up to the top of a mountain and actually touch a glacier and be there is so powerful and strong and affirming. I, I, the fact that I can still have adventures. I can have multiple, multiple disabilities and still have adventures. That's what's exciting. New to the Chris program, this will be Kent's first trip. When your ability is kind of taken away, it was kind of neat to have, to see there is a, a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. The degree of um, physical physical exertion that's going to be required on this trip is very high and uh, this is going to be a totally new experience for him. While Mary and third participant and then fly to the glacier, Kent will hike up the 10 kilometer trail with Troy and his volunteers to assist with carrying supplies. We really treat everybody as a per person of the team so for Kent he is going to be used as a Sherpa. Right? So he's still going to have to carry his own weight. He's still going to have to um, pull the chair and everything like that. So it's all about what they can do and enabling them to do what they can do and giving them that sense of empowerment. That's what we're about. I think I just got to say I can do it. I got to do most obstacles that have been put in my way with my vision loss. I've been able to do it and I don't, I don't foresee this being any different. Anin, the third participant, was left paralyzed after an ATV accident 10 years ago. When you talk to other people in a chair, you know, one, two years, you're just starting out five years, you should be a little bit into it, you should be fairly comfortable in your chair. So 10 years now, yeah, you know what, it's more comfortable, but it's still, you're still trying to figure it out. Anin will travel across the glacier on a piece of specialty equipment called a trail rider. The trail rider is specifically a one-wheeled chair. And a lot of people like to use the analogy of a wheelbarrow. So it's kind of like a reclining chair with the footrest out at about a 45 degree angle. And the height of the chair off the ground is very similar once it's the tire's touching to that of a standard wheelchair. And the person that sits in it, the wheel is actually right below their bum. And then you have a set of handles at the back. At the front of the chair is two long extended handles that go out beyond the person's feet. The key here is the chair's actually got five points of contact. As long as the person on the back is there and the person on the front is here, 
the chair is actually utilizing the, my two feet and the person's two feet at the back and the tire. So we're actually like a, a five leg spider moving around, which allows us to actually traverse a lot of very difficult and angulated terrain because at times, even as Sherpas, we're utilizing the chair and the contact to the ground of the tire to help support us as much as the chair is using us and our legs to support them. Mary, Kent, and Anin, along with Troy and his nine volunteers, will traverse the Begbie Glacier. The glacier overlooks Revelstoke uh, and it's at the base of Begbie Mountain. And then there's a rampway that traverses the north face of the ridge and that gets you onto the ridge line uh, in order to do an actual summit of Mount Begbie. So it's a pretty cool uh, objective. The viewpoints from up there are gonna be uh, obviously extraordinary because uh, you get a huge view of the whole valley of the Revelstoke area and all the uh, Rocky Mountains around it. I get to push my limits and I'm, I'm up for that. Even sighted people don't get an opportunity to do this very often so for me to, to do this hike and climb this glacier it'll be big it'll be huge. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. We're in, outside of Revelstoke on Highway 1. The fog is soft and it looks like it's just drifting against the mountains. It's almost like an ocean lapping up to a very gentle shore. We're going up to Mount Bigby and I have never been in a helicopter and I am very, very, very excited to go in a helicopter and also about an equal portion terrified. Last night laying in bed trying to go to sleep, just start thinking about everything. <laughs> you just don't know what you're going to see, whether it's wildlife. I mean, the scenery is going to be amazing. Just the, the glacier, the mountains, it's, that's going to be just spectacular, especially with the day the sun may be peeking out, a few clouds. I think that's gonna be really nice. The 10 minute helicopter ride will drop Mary and Anin at the toe of the glacier, gaining around 2,000 meters in elevation. I'm excited. <laughs> I think the nerves are gone now. It's too late for nerves. There's something magical about it. Like it doesn't look like it ought to fly and it does anyway, it's so cool. Sounds like our ride's coming. Everybody's jealous of me coming up, but I get to do it. And I'm not gonna say no to anything like this. <laughs> You basically have someone going up to some location or place that they never thought possible. We're really breaking the barriers, and not just us as an organization, but society in general in terms of accessibility and inclusion for all. As an excited Annan and Mary take off, Kent and guide Rob near the end of the 10 kilometer hike that will take them to the toe of the glacier. It was definitely 95% uphill. There's one itty bitty section that's downhill. Yeah. And then that's it. It's that just it. up, 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 and up. With rough terrain and contour difference on the ground and, and windfall, I, they sneak up on me pretty quick when you can't see them. You have to trust that your abilities are maybe more than what you initially thought they were. Step up. You can kind of see the um, big white face area. Yeah. And you'll see some darker slits vertical. Okay, so those are crevasses that open up. A crevasse is a crack in the surface of a glacier caused by extensive stress within the ice. But actually, when you look into them, for me, I can see that it's actually blue ice inside there. Oh, neat. I can see where it cuts through the two mountain peaks and kind of just comes down and spreads out wide. Even with my limited eyesight, it, I can pick it out and it's quite impressive. The goal of this whole journey in the past couple days is to get up to the glacier. I'm so close. <laughs> As Kent treks the last few kilometers, an excited Mary and Anin arrive at base camp. Fabulous. Smooth as smooth as smooth. It was yeah. lovely. The extreme change in altitude comes with a significant drop in temperature. With poor circulation, Mary must be extra careful about keeping warm. You're going to be primary? Warm water, food. Right? Hug. Hug? Oh. Excited? Yes. Totally. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. What do you think? Pretty cool. Glaciers are, are a new experience for all these people, so 
you know, it can be really hot on, this, on the glacier. It can be really cold. You can get sunburn really quick on them. Um, so there's lots of other underlining issues that we have to keep in mind as well. The team of volunteers work quickly to get a NIN set up in the trail rider, just as Kent makes it to base camp. Hi, Kent. Hi, Mary. I have a handout. Hi, hi there. Nice meeting you. Can you see the glacier? Or? I see layers and layers and layers. And some of them are blue and some are gray. Oh, yeah. and, and there's even a little bit over by the side that's, that's red. I, I guess there's a bacteria or, or a fungus yeah, or something. Yeah, an algae or something. Yeah, living on top of the ice, which mm -hmm. I think is incredible. Yeah. But all the rocks around us are in layers as well. So, because oh, yeah. it's, it's all pushed up from the bottom of the ocean, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It looks like a frozen river. It just, it's... Well, that's a neat way to describe it. You excited to get up there? Yeah, yeah. actually I yeah. am. On the glacier, we're basically at the toe right now of the glacier, and we have a couple of slots that we're gonna have to navigate in between. And the slot's basically the crevasse hole, right? Which is what we want to avoid. And those can be variable in both width and depth. As we go up, you know, maybe a 30 degree slope, two, 300 feet up there, um, then it flattens out. Then you're gonna, you're gonna start to hit snow. And because it's early and the temperature's cooler, the ice actually might stay there all day as opposed to softening up and us dropping through it a bit. To safely walk on the glacier, Kent, Mary, and the guides must wear metal spikes on their boots known as crampons. The crampons are laced around their feet and provide traction on the slippery surface. They feel really weird. <laughs> like I've put ice skates on and I'm not on ice yet. The team will be roped together by their harnesses. They must also wear helmets and carry an ice axe. The ice axe is, its primary purpose is if all of a sudden the rope team falls, yeah. anybody in the team falls into a hole, yeah. what will happen is we'll fall on our ice axes and our ice axe is what we use to secure ourselves in the snow so we okay. don't get pulled in with them okay. and that stops them from falling. Okay. And then what will happen is then we can, if Jeff's at the front or whoever, would then be able to rig up a haul system and we pull the person back out, okay. out, of, out of the actual grass. Okay. The glacier is too steep and slippery for all three participants to traverse safely at once. And then we'll explore the scenery at base camp while Troy and the guides take Mary and Kent first. Nice changes consistency a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, one minute you feel like you're on snow and you're on solid ice. Yeah. And it's best to give you the best yeah. traction. Okay. Oh, wow. There, Mary. After a steep traverse, Mary and Kent have reached a large crevasse. It did not feel like it was that far. I, I can't believe that I'm this high up. And I can see the mountains across the way from us. I see castles out of ice. It's like ramparts. You can see all these blue channels and, and like abstract shapes behind them. And there's a hole here. And again, it's all blue. And I can hear water. <laughs> It's almost too beautiful, even for one eye, you know? Even for one little window, it's just amazing. In the far distance, you're looking at actually Mount Revelstoke, okay. the ski hill. Yeah. So Revelstoke, this town, is actually just down to our left. You can just see the outskirts of it. Oh yeah. And then closer towards us, there's obviously the runout of the glacier, yeah. which has created a little small lake. Okay. And then, I don't know if you can pick it out, but you can actually see our tent that's set up oh. uh, down on the uh, rocks there. Okay. With all the packs. And then if you go further to the left, you can see the rest of our group preparing for the rest of the uh, ascent. Right. Down on the left there. Okay. And you can see they're on a snow field with the uh, red allergy on it. Oh yeah. I see a lot of white and I can see a little bit of gray here, which I'm assuming is a hole. Yep. And, yep. Um, and yeah, that's pretty. I can almost see a tin, tinge of blue, like Mary was saying. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, it looks kind of neat. It's like almost like turquoisey. Exactly. Yeah. 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 To grasp the magnitude of the crevasse, Kent will slowly rappel down into it. So we have an ice screw with uh, our ropes connected into the anchor, and we have basically four ropes that go down into the crevasse, which allow us to descend and ascend the actual crevasse hole. 
it's a little scary, a little uh, scary when you can't see what you're about to go into. So I'll just take my time and listen to my instructions. I just want to lower your bum okay. back. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. It's both self-gratifying, um, but it's also empowering to see what you can do and how you can change people's lives and the impact you can have. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well How's that? That's pretty exciting. <laughs> My knees were shaking a little bit. <laughs> You're not kidding, there's caves going everywhere. It's really interesting looking up this thing. It reminds me of, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, those sauna tubes that you have in a house that yeah. reflect the light? Exactly, exactly yeah. exactly what it reminds you of. It is quite round looking. Yeah, it's like a skylight pretty much. Exactly, that's exactly the cave. It like. It's yeah. just this one's quite wet. Exactly. <laughs> No, it's really You know what, they could take a guy out for a walk along Knox Mountain or along the Gr Mission Creek in Kelowna, right? That's one thing, but to, to push a guy's boundaries like this is it's pretty cool. I think I made it. Well done! <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. That was awesome. Really cool stuff down there. Mary's been doing lots of activities with us for a number of years, and obviously her condition's changing, as with all of us. <laughs> but um, for her to come up out of, up here in these elements and to go down into a crevasse hole and to put herself in a harness and stuff like that with all the aches and pains that her body feels just for that one experience, I mean... Look, it's like a whole other world. Shapes and, and colors that look like they come from somewhere else. It's blue and, and it could be an abstract painting in there. I've always wanted to do ice climbing, but uh, I have problems with my hands. So just being able to experience it, it's beyond having a dream, you know? Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. After waiting patiently while Mary and Kent explore the crevasses, and Nin is ready to experience the glacier firsthand. I've been close to glaciers, uh, but not right out on a glacier. I'd be happy just going up into the glacier up there and taking a look around. So the good just, thing is, is like uh, we have a mountain guide here, we have yeah. search and rescue members here, we have fire Where department we... rescue guys here, <laughs> so you got rope guys, you got glacier guys, and basically we're all going to put it all together and uh, make it all happen. Curious about how we're going to do this. Well that's good, so I am I. Yeah. <laughs> As the ski equipped trail rider is drawn up the hill by the Sherpas, a safety line anchored into the ice by 26 centimeter long ice screws prevents the team and Anin from sliding back down the hill. What we're not concerned about grass fall here, what we're more concerned about is the breakaway of one of us losing footing and a chair going backwards and sliding. Um, so that's why we have the rope, is in case we lose traction, it's going to stop us from sliding. Troy manages the balance at the back of the trail rider while providing vocal encouragement on the uphill haul. Each team member is connected by their climbing harness to a short tug line, then into a ganglion, much like a dog team connected to a sled. Okay, so slow the rate, pace down, slow it down, just so we got good footing. Nice strong pull, but slow. Notice there's a hole there. <laughs> oh yeah! Stop, stop, stop! So make sure you're leaning on your poles, guys. Like literally leaning forward on them. A challenge of Annan, keeping him comfortable. But then again, he's also the driving force that pushes me, right? Steep. Like this, I'm leaning back. Like <laughs> It's like we're going up. Bottom elevation is the glacier, and then it's the rock face and then sky up there. Forward. The activity I miss the most is uh, is actually just hiking outdoors. You know, if I go hunting, it wasn't the idea to go hunting to go and 
get an animal or you know go fishing to you know bring home a bunch of fish it was going out to watch the sun come up you know watch the sun set 10 years after his accident an emotional and nin takes in the spectacular view to be out here doing this again uh, it's it's tough to put into words sometimes it's um, coming up in the helicopter and coming over the rise and seeing you know the the lakes and the rivers running down through here and then sitting down below and looking up at the glacier at the hills and the clouds that have been just kind of wafting over the top of the the mountains coming in around us and then a patch of blue sky and the sun shining through and just warming you up for that second <laughs> It feels like we're you know, a million miles away from everybody. Just to the left of the scale, that's the valley. It takes you up to Rogers. And then Mount Revelstoke Park's basically straight ahead. That's what we're looking at right now, straight ahead on the other side of Revelstoke. It's fabulous. <laughs> it's about the time with the people. It's creating the experiences, seeing what they're going through, seeing the differences in their lives. It's something longer than I've ever done, and part of it I didn't think I was going to be able to do. So I really appreciate these guys and their hard work. I'm proud of what I did and happy that they're here to help me. This is, is ammunition. In my winter depression, I will bring these memories out and I will use them to scare it off. Watching these guys work hard to get us up here to let me have a chance to see this thankful to everybody here. I don't think at any point in time there's any specific one reason for doing it. I think it's a lifestyle that we all enjoy and love and just want to share with others. The, the whole cohesive group coming together and bonding to make the experience happen um, and then obviously to be able to share that with someone who wouldn't get that opportunity otherwise just brings it all together. Producer Pamela Tomlinson, Director of Photography Dion Nell, Camera Operator Travis Cross, Location Audio Jason Wood, Editors Pamela Tomlinson, Manuel Grados Andrade, Production Coordinator Rob Braun, Associate Producer Troy Becker, Special Thanks Yamnuska Mountain Adventures Canmore, Alberta, Jeff Rutan, ACMG Mountain Guide, Revelstoke, BC, Glacier Helicopters Limited, Revelstoke, BC, Noah's Ark Resort, Revelstoke, BC, Integrated Describe Video Specialist Simone Cupid, Narrator Jim Van Horn, Regional Content Specialist Sylvie Fiquette, Graphics Mike Smith, Senior Producer Jennifer Johnson, Director Production Karen I, Director Programming Brian Perdue, VP Programming and Production John Melville, President and CEO David Arrington, Copyright 2019 Accessible Media Inc.